All right, today we're talking about how to solve uh, linear systems using elimination. Um, prior to this, we talked about a system is two or more equations on the same graph or in the same situation. So we don't always graph them. So if we're not graphing them, then there are two or more equations that are in the same situation. Um, the solution to a system is the intersection point of a system or the point where the equations are equal. All right, so today we're talking about elimination. It is an algebraic method to solving systems. All right, so let's look at the steps. Um, first, both equations need to be written in standard form uh, or they both need to be written in the same format. Uh, standard form is usually how you see them. Uh, step two, if needed, multiply an equation um, to create a zero pair. So this method is all about using a zero pair to eliminate one of the variables. All right. Then we're going to add or combine the equations together, which the zero pair would then eliminate a variable. And that's how we're going to find our first answer. All right. So let's look at example number one. They're both written in standard form. We've got AX plus BY equals C. So we've got, they're both written in the same format. The equal signs line up, the X's, the Y's line up. So if we just draw a line and we add these two equations together, so I'm going to add my X's, add my Y's, my equal signs line up, and then I add my C values. Uh, when I add them together, my x's create a zero pair. I've got a negative 5x and a positive 5x, so that makes a zero pair. So they're going to eliminate each other. So when I add my two equations together, those, my x's are gone, and I have negative 6y plus 2y is negative 4y equals 8 plus 4 is 12. And... Now I've got an equation with only y's, so I can solve for y. Uh, I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides, and I get y equals negative 3. Once you have one answer, we're going to do the same thing we did on substitution to find the other answer. We just plug it back into one of the original equations. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. They'll both give you a right answer. So uh, I'm going to pick the second one just because it has positive values instead of negative values. So I'm going to say 5x plus 2y, because I already know what my y is, equals 4. Uh, my y value is negative 3, so I put that into my uh, gap here. So I have 5x minus 6 equals 4. And now I can just solve for x. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. I get 5x equals 10, so x equals 2. All right, once you have an x value and a y value, put them together in an ordered pair in alphabetical order. So x goes first and then y. And that is our answer. All right, so this whole method works by using a zero pair. So sometimes there's already a zero pair there. Just like if we look at this one, there's already a zero pair here with the y's. So we can eliminate x's or y's. It doesn't matter. We're trying to find the easiest way to get a zero pair. So right here, we're going to just combine the two equations. So we're at, basically, we're adding the two equations. These two make a zero pair. So 6x minus 3x is 3x. And then I've got an equal sign. 14 plus 1 is 15. And now I'm going to divide by 3. And I get x equals 5. All right, so there's half of my answer. So now I'm going to use one of the original equations. Again, it doesn't matter which one. They'll both work. And I'm going to plug x in. So I'm going to say negative 3x plus 4y equals 1. x is 5, so that goes right there. So this is negative 15 plus 4y equals 1. Uh, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. 
I get 4y equals 16 divided by 4, so y equals 4. Once you have two answers, we're going to put them in an ordered pair, in alphabetical order. 5, 4, and there's my answer. All right, sometimes you don't have variables that are x's and y's. Sometimes you have a and b or um, any, any variables, so you just put them in alphabetical order. Okay, uh, let's see. We're not going to do all these examples. That's a lot of examples. Uh, let's look at, let's see, let's look at this one. This one does not have an automatic zero pair. Um, in order to have a zero pair, we need a, a positive and then a negative with the same number. Uh, right here, we've got a plus 3y and another plus 3y. So it would be a zero pair if one of these were negative. So what we can do is we just make one a negative, meaning we multiply by negative one. Now that means we have to multiply the whole thing by negative one. All right, and again, I just picked this one. We could have done the first one and multiply that one by a negative one, it would work out. Uh, you just pick one, that way uh, we're trying to get a positive three y and a negative three y. All right, so this is gonna be, tell you what, I'll put it this way. Uh, so negative one times five is negative five x, and then negative one times three y is negative three y. Negative one times negative two is positive two. All right, so now I've multiplied this whole equation by negative one, and uh, then I'm gonna rewrite the first equation. I'm not gonna change it at all. All right, now I have a zero pair. A, ne a positive three y and a negative three y make a zero pair. So they're gonna eliminate, and I'm gonna combine the two equations. So four x minus five x is negative one x. This is a zero pair, so all my y's go away. And then two plus two is four. All right, now to solve this, I'm just gonna divide by negative one on both sides, so now I get x equals negative four. And that's half of my answer. So now to get the y value, I need to plug it back in, and I can use either one of my x values. So I'm gonna do the top one. Four x plus three y equals two. And I know that x is negative 4. So this is going to make negative 16 plus 3y equals 2. So I'm going to add 16. So that makes 18. And divide by 3. And I get y equals 6. All right, once I have an x and a y, I'm going to put it in an ordered pair x value, and then y value, and there we go. <clears throat> All right, this next one, same thing. Um, I could set that up. I just need one to be positive, one to be negative. So if I multiplied the whole equation here by negative one, then it would be ready to go, okay? All right, let's look at some that, ha that need a little bit more than that, okay? Uh, over here, they're both in standard form, but I don't have any zero pairs. So I need, I want to make a zero pair. I've got a negative y and a positive y, but I need them to have the same coefficient. This one has a coefficient of negative two. So I need this one to have a coefficient of positive two, and then it would work out. So I'm going to take this whole second equation and I'm going to multiply it by two. So that's going to give me negative 2x plus 2y equals 2. So notice I'm multiplying the x, the y, and this other number. Everything in the equation is getting multiplied by 2. We're just going to double the whole thing. All right, and then the first equation we're going to leave alone. So I'm just going to rewrite it. 3x minus 2y equals 3. All right, so now if I combine the equations, I've got a zero pair right there. So that will eliminate all my y's. So now I've got 3x minus 2x is just 1x. And 3 plus 2 is 5. 
So we added these two together because they're both positive. And we subtracted here because this was a negative. So it's really 3 plus negative 2 is just 1x. So I got x equals 5. So that's that one's already solved for me. That's half of my answer. So now I just take the x value and plug it back into one of the original equations. Um, we can put it in the second one here. So I can say negative x plus y equals 1. And I know that x is 5. All right, so that's negative 5. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I get y equals 6. All right, so that's the other half of my answer. So my x value is 5 and my y value is 6. And we're all done. All right, let's look at, tell you what, we're going to skip number 6 and we're going to look at number 7. Uh, this one, I've got a positive and a negative, but they have different numbers. And then here I've got two positives. So um, if I want them to have the same coefficient to make a zero pair, um, I, could, I could use the x's and I can make them both into 12. If I multiply the top equation by 3, because 3 times 4 would be 12, and then if I multiply the bottom equation by 4, so that would be a negative 12, then I'll have a zero pair. So sometimes, sometimes a zero pair is already there, and you just use it. Sometimes you just need to change a sign so that you have a positive and a negative. And then sometimes you have to multiply both of them to make 1. So if you multiply them by each other, then 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3 is 12. Um, and that's how you get your zero pair. So for this equation, we're going to multiply 3 times everything here. So this would be 12x plus 15y equals, uh, let's see, 35 times 3 is 105. All right, and then the bottom one, uh, 4 times negative 3 is going to be negative 12x. Uh, this is going to be 8y, and then 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. So just multiply everything in the equation. And now I've got my zero pair. So the, all my x's go away. And I'm combining the two equations together. So 15y plus 8y is 23y. And 105 minus 36 is 69. So I'm going to divide by 23, divide by 23, and I get y equals 3. So that is my y value. And then to get my x value, I'm going to plug it back into one of these equations. Uh, I'm going to use the first equation. So 4x plus 5y equals 35, and my y value is 3, so I put that in there. So this is 4x plus 15 equals 35. Uh, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, and I get 4x equals, uh, let's see, 15 minus 35 is 20. So then to solve for x, divide by 4, and I get x equals 5. All right, so I've got an x value and a y value. My x value is 5. My y value is 3. So that is my solution to my system. Okay. So uh, in order to use elimination, the key thing is to make sure they're both in standard form. If they're both in standard form, then you can make a zero pair so that one of the uh, variables is eliminated. All right. Now, if you're done with the notes, uh, we're just going to leave number four and number six blank. You can fill those in if you want to, but I think we've got enough examples of each type. So we're going to leave just we're going to leave those blank. Uh, we're going to take this, fold it down to about here. All right, and now glue that in your notebook so you don't lose it. All right, that's it.